Hello, friends and neighbors. Today, we have some special, unique content interview with the Live Map team and Andre Artishev, the inventor of a motorcycle helmet with an integrated navigation system. Now, we've already discussed his helmet and its prototype, so today we will be talking about the finished product. Pre release, right? That's right. So it's already in the production stage, and Andre really is a genius. He has an exceptional mind and outstanding knowledge, which he's using to create the future, a future and the technologies that it will hold. That's right. This product will be so popular that, well, it's already popular. Andre, please tell us a little bit about how this got started and where we're headed at the moment. I'd like to thank the viewers for watching this video and showing an interest towards our product. This whole thing began when I found out about flight helmets for F-35 planes, where the pilot has shown certain images, navigation, radar, targets. I thought that a helmet is a helmet and a flight helmet could be adapted into a motorcycle helmet. The first prototype was done 2013. It was based on aviation technology where the optics were pointed downwards, and it was assumed that this is obviously just a model. The optics would shine down on the lens imitator, which would separate the light from the projector, sending half of the image to the eye and reflecting the other half as lighting. Had this prototype been approved for mass production, it would have looked something like this. Over the development process, we found out that we cannot certify a helmet on which the optics are situated above the head. As you can see, the idea was for optics to be located above the head, shining down onto the visor. So it wouldn't have passed certification standards, uh, EC 22.05? No, it would not have been certified, but it was very interesting as a concept, as a prototype or proof of concept, as it were. After that, we posted our first video in 2013. You can find it on YouTube, where biker Peter Dick, my good friend, is riding the streets of Moscow. It received over one and a half million views on various video platforms. After the video, BMW and Scully announced the release of their own helmets, which failed to impress, meaning never saw any success. Scully collected the money and, in the end, hit rock bottom, while BMW never actually took action, announcing only the concept. It is also worth mentioning that when presenting this prototype, we haven't halted our progress and continue to develop the next product. Products. We moved the optics from the top to the bottom into the chin area. This kicked off a totally new development stage, since there was no existing reference design. This was hard to do since all flight helmets have optics situated above the forehead and none of them situated in the chin area since the oxygen hose comes through there. The pilot has to breathe when piloting or catapulting. Mm -hmm. I understood that to be certified, they had to be placed in the chin area. Because there are even open face helmets that only guard the chin area. The main thing was for the helmet to protect the temples, the nape of the neck, and the crown. So we put the optics here in the chin area. This took us three years. Maybe some of you read about it. We developed it with Bauman Moscow State Technical University and then ran into a lawsuit with them. A short backstory. Andre wanted everything done in Russia. He ordered a project from Bauman Moscow State Technical University and sadly, the project ended showing no results. The university let him on without doing anything and eventually they went to court years later. A long lawsuit followed, which Andre after I realized that my efforts were useless as far as creating optic technology in Russia and using an existing optics reserve, I turned to the Americans. This helmet was presented in 2017. As you can see, it was significantly smaller than its predecessor and looked more generic since it was the first helmet that we had developed from scratch. Here we had a helmet made by Laser Monaco, where we simply just added a jaw guard to this helmet. The helmet itself was made generically. The projection is onto a part of the imitator, 
situated on the visor called the combiner. It creates a virtual image that, as opposed to virtual reality helmets, it's completely transparent. We researched this prototype, realized that it needed improvements, and at the CES Consumer Electronics Show, presented a model of the finished product. The finished helmet will look exactly like the one here on the table. The design was developed with the help of the Smirnov Design Studio, professional industrial design developers. I think they did their job very well. Also, they did their job so well that if Elon Musk had known, I sent you a picture where he presented some spacesuits where the helmets didn't look near as good. If you put this helmet on their suit, you would be a full-blown astronaut. Let's try and get a hold of them and sell our helmets for the SpaceX astronauts. The difference between that prototype and this prototype is that it is even smaller and more aerodynamic. This will be the most aerodynamic helmet on the planet thanks to its thin visor and the projection. Yeah, because here it had windows, which isn't very convenient. These legs don't seem very aesthetic, and you will have a projection without any windows on the visor itself. That's awesome. A lot of your competitors are also presenting helmets, helmets with the same micro display. True, they are following the same path I've already been over. Here there are some type of micro displays, like the Scully version or waveguide displays. However, the key objective was to make a flight helmet that cost $600,000, but cheaper, for at around two to $2,500 with a visor projection. No extra parts jutting out, making a sort of seamless screen. This we did. Right now we are finishing up testing, press forms and being made for optic parts and a half-functional prototype that will be presented this summer. Meaning, you already have it. Motherboards. Are the supplier contracts already signed? All the technology pulled together? Yes. Now all that remains is the time for press forms and electronics. Do you have a pilot who's tested the helmet completely and tell us about its advantage? Sure. Our team includes test pilots from a number of countries. Pete Dick from Russia, who figured into the first video and the other Axel videos from the U.S. Vladimir Dadunov and others as well. I would like to introduce you to Vladimir Dadunov, the man who helps me test these prototypes on the road as a biker who has spent quite a few years saddled up on his motorcycle. He's probably traveled over half the planet by now. On a bike? No exaggeration. At the very least, there is no road in Europe that he hasn't biked over. Once he admitted this to me jokingly, but I pretty much just took him at his word. Introduce us. Nice to meet you. Looking at this helmet, it seems like such a high-tech gadget, right? It belongs somewhere along names like Tesla, Apple, Elon Musk, and SpaceX. Tell us what this helmet has to offer. Well, first off, it's not just a pretty picture, it's a well-calculated design. All tests have already been carried out virtually, which is to say the helmet is fully worked out. Taking into account the head autonomy, taking into account the aerodynamics, and the optics optimality. That is a fully working helmet. What have we accomplished so far? My job at this point is testing. For example, we tried to understand what the optimal projection focus distance was. For example, the Nuvis product. We tried to ride with it, evaluate the ease of use, but realized that a short distance of focus is not acceptable. That is, a focus distance of two meters is not much difference in terms of convenience from a one meter distance. When you ride a motorcycle, you have a speedometer on the handlebars about one meter from you. On the Nuvis, it is about two meters, leaving the focus somewhere near the asphalt. To translate the view onto the road, you still need to transfer the focus, thus reading the information from the display, distracting you from controlling what happens on the road. Sure, you could easily crash. I had the same experience with driving. 
I got a message, picked up my phone, and I accidentally hit somebody, not a person, the car in front of me, scraped his bumper. Exactly. Our helmet solves this problem. The same goes here. A life is on the line, and Andre has made sure that many people's lives will be better protected. Yes, a lot of work has been put in. We recently decided that the optimal focus distance is 20 meters. For instance, on the third prototype, the image focus was the same distance as an automobile's, with a head-up display. We assume that companies that manufacture head-up displays conduct tests to find the optimal distance for projection focus. However, we came to realize that this doesn't work for a motorcyclist, even when the motorcyclist is going at a slow speed, at say 20 kilometers per hour, his focus is set further than that of an automobile driver. Thus, 20 meters is the ideal focus distance. This technology allows for any focus, to infinity. For pilots, their firing focus is infinity. At the moment, there is no product with an augmented reality that might provide such a focus. Only fighter pilot helmets and our helmet. The only two such existing products in the world. Awesome. Exactly. In this sense, we have zero competition. There are clones that try to copy us, but they have a focus of two meters. Since you brought up competition, I'll point out again that they copy only the area, as some put the frame on the top, some on the bottom. This is inconvenient, since you have to readjust. But here, you don't have to. You look at the road ahead of you and see a map as well as your speed. I was wondering, what is its field of view? Ours is 18 degrees, which is significantly more than that of automobile heads-up displays. BMWs have 8 degrees, right? Yeah, 8 is the most advanced ones. We will have 18 by 12 degrees. Just rotate your head slightly and can't see a thing. That's the problem with cars. Correct. While here, your head is constantly fixated within the helmet, so that no matter where you look, look to the side, but in an automobile, you can only look ahead and see the projection. Turn away, and you can't see it, or the man. Moreover, we have even more opportunities. When traveling by car, you cannot move the windshield in the direction you are looking in, but in our case, you can move in. For example, if you take a fighter pilot helmet, they can project a virtual display somewhere here, fixate it, for instance, the display of the guidance system. It is pointed this way and the guidance system that way. We have the same possibilities. The screen can be endless. You could look up and see the temperature outside and when the sun will go down. The potential is enormous for this technology. This is real augmented reality. As it should be. No half-baked garbage in the form of micro-displays. Or say, Google released glasses. I thought it would be projected onto the glasses, but no. It turns out there's a micro-display in the corner, just like Scully technology, that will never pass certification because these micro-displays are not safe. There's a chance to scratch the retina on impact, to gouge out your eye. It will never get certified, but here it will pass because there are no dangerous parts. Everything is put together based on functionality and with the prospect of injury taken into account. Even if the driver was to crash and fly off his motorcycle, he wouldn't be harmed. Completely correct. Also, some people are concerned that this will be a distraction. The image looks about just like a neon billboard by the road. Just like when you drive by a neon billboard in a car, everything is very natural. 
I drive a car with a heads-up display. I never have to look at the instrument panel. Everything is right there in front of me. I'm so used to it that even if I get a new car, I will need a projection. Since the cameras count road signs, it calculates your speed at 60, you ride on at 20 plus and easily avoid getting a ticket without speeding, everything is so functional that I don't even look at the instrument speedometer at all. My eyes are only on the road and the lower portion of the projection. I would like to ask, since we're on the subject of automobile projections, mine counts the signs and calculates the speed. Where will it get the information? It has a camera. What is its function? To record video. But here you can implement functions like recording road signs. Motorcycles are packed with electronics and sensors almost like cars. For example, now the BMW scooter is already equipped with a blind zone control sensor. Technology is being actively introduced and motorcycles are moving along the same path as cars. That is, everything that you previously had on the dashboard will now be right in front of you. That is, everything that is needed has been relocated. Is speed needed? Yes. Reading road signs. Yes. Angle degrees. Yes. All that is needed. Besides, if your phone rings, the number is shown here, the number is calling you. Either answer or, there are buttons here, volume level, you can easily touch, and you can safely talk without being distracted by the headset, so on. Look, I'm looking at the helmet and don't understand why all these things are needed. Can you tell me more? For example, this, 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 this is the camera. Here, everything is done for a reason. For example, when cycling, it can get really hot, so we have provided special ventilation. There is also a camera. It is located at a very exact angle. If it is placed on the chin, then you need to bend it strongly up. It is more correct to place it at an angle like this. Place it. This is the control for the power button. Everything will mainly be voice controlled. We have a lot writing on this since it is very convenient. You'll be able to answer, reject, navigate, say on my way while seeing the way there. The key feature you already brought up, and I think the most important issue, is the automation of the helmet. If it won't work at least an hour, then who needs it? When talking about automation, you can compare it to a regular smartphone, playing games that will last one amount of time, surfing the web another, and listening to music another amount. It all depends on how you use it. But as a rule, at maximum usage, it will last three hours. At minimum, six to seven hours. If someone's on the road for three hours, how can you charge it automatically? First of all, it will have a very efficient charger. If you stop at a gas station, just take it with you. Or stop in for some coffee, and after half an hour, you will have about 80% of your battery charge. What does it weigh? It weighs... With all the components, it adds around 150 to 200 grams. If talking about the GoPro, the 6 weighs 117 grams. If talking about the Sina headset, it is the top headset. One control unit weighs 61 grams. Roughly speaking, the whole headset is about 80 grams. In total, the GoPro plus a headset is already 200 grams. Nothing needs to be attached additionally, as this hurts the aerodynamics and blocks the view. All in one case, you don't have to carry a bunch of cables for GoPro, Sina to charge for the night. You can plug in one cable and charge everything together. It also weighs less. The shape is a bit unusual, while in terms of aerodynamics, it is much more efficient than a standard helmet. Due to the sharpness of the visor, its aerodynamics are improved. Meaning it is fairly aerodynamic? Yes, especially for a motorcycle helmet. It looks great to me. I have someone I'd like to give this to. But about the price, how much does it cost? 
You can pre-order now for $500, which can be refunded at any time, and we will give you a discount of $500 on the final price. The final payment before sending the product is $1,000. What is the bottom line price? The price is at $1,500 right now and will be $2,000 in store. Why so much? If you count up the cost of all the components separately, including the GoPro, headsets, helmet, motorcycle navigator, then the price is actually lower than all these components combined. After all, this is a high-tech product, sort of like the first MacBooks. Like the first iPhone, this is the iPhone of motorcycle helmets. We used to have mobile phones, then the smartphone came around. Same here. Helmets on the market right now are like old cell phones, while this is a real smart helmet. A new level of fresh break for bikers. It's a smartphone. Yes, this technology offers a unique experience. The first time I test ran this helmet, it seemed like a miracle, like magic. I simply couldn't believe it was possible. When I first sat behind a projection in a car, I also couldn't believe it. Same here. When I saw the projection in the car, I was totally amazed. This is a unique experience. And if we compare it, the helmet, with a military helmet, then there is a price tag. A man from Lockheed Martin, a company that makes military helmets, came to our stand and we had a price of $600,000 on our poster. He said, you have the wrong price, the real one is a million dollars per helmet. That is one helmet costs a million dollars, and here it costs 2000 is a huge difference. Huge is right. Disruptive technology. So, friends, you understand that here lies the real future. People who fail at cloning Andre can only clone his past. Andre lives in the present. We've seen his progress, 2013, 16, 17, and now it's 2019 with pre-production models, pre-release. There isn't much time left until summer. Everything inside the optics, the motherboard, the camera, the visors, everything will be put together, and you'll get the final product that any biker can walk up, put on, and see what we will live like in the future. Unique people live in our time. As Popov invented the radio, Artyshev invented a helmet for bikers that has no match in the world. Andre, I want to shake your hand. Soon we'll see people riding the streets of Europe and in the U.S. with this future to thank for. Thanks to everyone who watched this far. Press like, promote this, and get the news out. Show people that innovations like these deserve better.